Thanks for staying with us. The federal government announced the completion of two significant oil sector divestment deals worth about $1.5 billion, one between Nigeria Ajip Oil Company and Oando PLC, and another between Equino and Project Odimim. The chief executive of Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, NUPRC, Benga Komolafe, disclosed this at the Nigeria Oil and Gas Conference in Abuja. Komolafe also updated on two other major divestment deals, a $2.4 billion deal between Shell Petroleum Development Company, SPDC, and Renaissance, and a $1.2 billion deal between ExxonMobil and Seplat. He mentioned that the NO NAOC Oando and Equino Project Odinim uh, deals were concluded with signing ceremonies pending, while the SPDC Renaissance deal is undergoing due diligence and ExxonMobil and Seplat are seeking ministerial consent. Komolafe also announced that Nigeria's functional oil rigs increased to 34 as of June 2024, a significant rise from previous years. He highlighted the ongoing 2024 licensing round where 31 oil blocks are on offer for bidding, urging potential investors to participate before the registration closes. We are being joined by Mr. Frank Elanya, Senior Financial Analyst and Tech or Tech Cabal. Uh, you're, good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Elanya. Good morning and thank you for always having me. Mm. Senior Financial Analyst, Tech Cabal. I didn't get that right the first time. So, um, divestment, uh, two successful divestment, and it seems like uh, a very laudable achievement uh, by the federal government. Let us understand what it means to divest and what, how significant these uh, two divestments about, with, uh, with the federal government uh, is going to have, what, is, what impact is going to have on the economy. I'm eating my words this morning. Okay. Um, particular, I, I, I think it's particularly interesting that uh, the federal government is celebrating um, this uh, um, or the closing of these deals, uh, given that um, it took them uh, months and a lot of uh, issues to um, finally close that of uh, uh, Seplat, for instance, Seplat and Mobile. Uh, we know how um, um, Seplat uh, uh, wanted to acquire that, uh, that uh, um, asset from Mobile, and uh, it was delayed for for months until um, the uh, um, until this present administration um, had to do something about it. You know, um, it, now they are celebrating, of course, taking pictures and all that. But it, it is it, it is a good thing. Um, to have these deals happen, um, but it is even better if there is a predictable process that these deals can happen, so that we don't have a repeat of uh, of the process that led um, that delayed um, the completion of the ExxonMobil and Seplata deal. Um, it would be it would be nice to actually have um, an environment where you know. What you're going to get, you're tr if, if you're trying to acquire a company, um, you know the process and you know how long that process is going to take, and um, that helps you plan. That also um, ensures that if you if you want to make an investment, you also know how much you're going to get out of it. Now um, we have these deals, and it, it is good. We are looking for more to happen. Um, but then, then um, I, I think what will really help the economy will be that these deals will lead to um, increased uh, oil production. Um, let's, let's take our quarter um, to 1.5 uh, million barrels per day for the first time um, in, the, in the life of this administration. Um, it, it will also be interesting to see um, how the, uh, all the, the investors that will bid for the other for the other um, oil rigs that are remaining 34 of them um uh, i i think the success of these two uh, of, of these bids that it just um closed will be a pointer for other investors um to to determine whether they want to come into the market or not 
Um, what that would mean is that the federal government will go beyond just saying we have completed the, the, um, the deal to making the environment a lot more conducive for the companies that have won the, the, the bids and ensuring that they start production as soon as possible. That will encourage or put uh, uh, give confidence to other investors that will be looking to come into the oil and gas sector. It is very, very, it is very, very critical that they remove all the bottlenecks or the barriers um, to investment in that sector so that um, there will be a chance for these other 34 oil rigs. Because like it or not, $1.2 billion is just a scratch of where we're supposed to be. Um, in terms of what the economy needs to bounce back. Um, and then um, it, 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 it will be even more beneficial for us if there is a lot more activity happening in that sector um, with these new investors that have come in. But just success will then determine, um, like I said before, the um, what happens to the other 34 um rigs that we have that are yet to be uh, um beaded on okay this deal has been closed or these deals have been closed and uh, you say it's a good thing for us and our economy but uh, it, it must go beyond just closing deals what else can be done or should be done in that sector because there seem to be too many bottlenecks in that sector but what are the ha hanging fruits the low hanging fruits that could be done in, for that sector to be open enough to be transparent enough to be profitable enough for more investors to go in uh, and uh, want to invest in it because i'm surprised that since the bidding for these oil wells was done uh, not all of them have been taken i was hoping that everybody would be rushing for it but uh, not everything has been taken and i'm wondering why that is happening so what else needs to be done to free that space enough for people to invest in i i think we, we can start with the dislodgement of uh, what they call the cabals the oil cabals i was in kigali um, for the african ceo forum in may and one of the things that uh, dangote spoke about was that in fact he said that's one of the bottlenecks that he has had so far while building his refinery um the 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 so-called oil cabals um that are making things difficult for operators in that industry and the oil cabals often are constituted by political figures um who are still within the corridors of power who've got vested interests that um, anything um, that they seem to override um, uh, um, policies that, um, that will move the industry forward. So first of all is to depoliticize the oil, or oil and gas sector. I don't know how they're going to do that because many of them got rich or are, are still getting rich by, um, by the handouts or by whatever um, that comes out from their being involved in that industry. But it should take um, a lot of uh, sincerity and a lot of uh, uh, um, diligence from these governments to be able to say, um, we are going to get out of the way um, in terms of uh, um, being, being the roadblocks for this industry. We'll get out of the way and allow the industry to walk the way it's supposed to work. We have a model. Uh, we, we keep talking about the Aramco, Saudi Arabia, um, oil and gas uh, industry. You know, you, you can't be an Aramco if you continue to um, be, be in the way of uh, policies that are supposed to move the industry forward. So first of all, is to depoliticize that, that, um, um, that sector and, and also to create that enabling environment. Um, the government needs to go beyond uh, this portrayal of uh, rent seeking. Um, everyone sees the government as uh, rent seekers. Um, they only come when things have already um, started working well. They're not in the process to make it work well. But when they see, once they see that um, things are working well, they just come in and start collecting taxes um, from them. And you see a lot of um, um, that, um, crazy taxes that, that doesn't make sense. And then the other thing is to address insecurity in that in um in the oil communities you know um uh, it's high time that the government get involved in uh, uh um being part of the community and ensuring that that, uh, that um companies who work there 
um, can can beat their chest and say we have been safe here for a, for a long while. We'll continue to invest there because those are the issues that make companies want to leave leave the country. That will make um, that will make them want to sell off their assets and and exit the industry. You know, once you address those politics, number one, you address insecurity. And then you you address all the other um, uh, um, issues around um, taxations that um, that doesn't make sense. You know, um, you start to put things in other in that industry, and then you start seeing more progress than you've had so far. Well, but uh, you mentioned something really scary: uh, removing the the cabal. How will they do that? The cabal has been there for a very very long time, and they will kill to remain there. What do you think can be done for these cabals to be eliminated from that sector? Because we agree, yes, that they are the problem of the sector. Not just that, in all our life as a nation, cabals are everywhere. Oil sector, cabals, political cabals, everywhere we have cabals. How do we remove these cabals from the oil sector? Are we using technology? Are we using brute force? Are we using diplomacy? What are we going to do? If if we use um, brute force, it will it will almost be like government trying to dislodge itself because uh, most of the people in government are part of that cabal. Um, you remember there was a time when they said they wanted to release names of uh, people who are um, who are making things difficult, uh, corrupt individuals in government. They never did. Why? We, you and I will probably uh, um, have to take that to mean that is either they know the people and or they are part of the people so um it's like i said it's it's just a matter of waking up and putting your country first before your um individual interest that has not been the case in in nigeria um you um you can imagine or if if we go deeper into the deal that they have just closed 1.5 billion deal that they have just closed the question really is how much of that money is going to be plowed back into the economy and to help the economy to grow and how much of that um, money will find itself into individual pockets you know so um those are the issues that we're looking at so yeah on on one hand we have made we we, we seem to have done something good but the end result is always what, 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 where the issues are you take that 1.5 billion dollars it will change a lot of things in education it will change a lot of things say in uh, road construction it will change a lot of things in healthcare but how much of it will eventually get to those critical sectors that's where the problem is so the first of all the government needs to be sincere with itself it needs to tell itself we have done things the same way over a long time and we have not gotten anywhere a lot of uh, a lot of the issues, a lot of the corruption is because we are part of it. So we need to remove ourselves from it. So sincerity has to be the word word here. I'm leading by example, which, which has not been a strong suit of uh, the government. Uh, so first of all, is to lead by example. Um, if you say use technology, um, yeah, it's, it's always a very lofty solution to everything that we're going through. But at the end of the day, the question is, who are those who are installing the, uh, the, um, the technology? Won't they find a way to bypass it and uh, still continue the way um, things are done? We saw what happened with uh, the Beavers machines. Uh, at, the, at the end of the day, it was, as, it was almost useless because at the end of the day, INEC um, uh, um, called results from his head. So that's where the problem is. If you use technology, are you going to respect the, um, the outcome of that technology? If you're automating the entire system, it will mean that you're removing um, the, the, the third men, the third parties that are always lining up themselves to collect um, rent from that industry, and it will clean up the industry. But the sincerity has to be there first. The, 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 um, the mentality that we're putting our country first before ourselves has to be um, the driving force. Um, the question is, are they willing for that to be the driving force? Mm. Only time will tell. Uh, well, um, I'm, I'm thinking maybe it, has, it will take um, Jesus, Mohammed, Buddha, and uh, Zoroastra, <laughs> and all of them coming together to make sure that this happens. Because... I put it to you, if I were a lawyer, that's what I would say. I put it to you that if they want to find a solution, they will set up a committee 
and the committee will do findings and then it will be the end of it nobody will hear anything about it uh, but no, we exactly. hope to have that one leader that will will tell himself that I'm going to do one tenor, because you can't do two tenors if you want to fight cabals in Nigeria. I will do one tenor, mm -hmm. and I'm going to right some wrongs, and when I leave, it will be difficult for the next person coming to, to, to go back to the old ways. At least people have ruled for one tenor, and they were a success story. Mandela did it for one time. Uh, even here in Lagos, we have had Jack on the do it, doing it for one time, and no governor has been able to surpass what he did in Lagos State, no matter what any other person might think about. Whether you talk about buildings, whether you talk about uh, education, whether you talk about anything. Uh, but he did one tenor. So maybe it will take one one tenor president to tell himself that I'm going to do what Nigerians will not believe that can be done. Because if you're having to fight yourself, then it's a difficult thing. You are the one there already. We have seen people who have become governors from another political party, and they said that political party destroyed the country for 16 years. But now they, are, they were the ones there, and now they are saying they destroyed the country for 15, 16 years, and they are removing themselves from that. That's what is going to always happen. But well, today is not a day to, to be angry. Today is not a day to be complaining too much. <laughs> today is a weekend, so let's unwind uh, this weekend. And we survived the flood, so we should mark ourselves survivor. Uh, so yes. So I'd like to thank you, Frank Elanya, hoping that you're going to turn up somewhere and have some fun this, uh, this weekend. I'll try. If the floors have not taken my house from me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> thank you very much for your time. We've been talking with Frank Leanya, a senior financial analyst with Tech Cabal, and we were looking at the divestment uh, that the federal government has said they've done, and uh, so much money that has come in. We're hoping the money will be used for correct purposes, and we're hoping that this is a sign that the, the climate in that place, in that space in the petroleum sector is so good now that there will be a lot of investments going into that sector and also will result in a, a lease of life for all Nigerians. This is how we are going to wrap it up for today and for the week on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. On behalf of the entire crew of Plus TV Breakfast, my name is Nyamgul Agaji saying have a wonderful weekend and let's do it again on Monday.